in the house of God on this beautiful, cold Sunday morning. For those of you watching online, I'm so glad that you chose to worship with us today. It just feels good to be in the house of God. Amen. 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 Last week, Pastor Abraham launched us into a sermon series titled, I Love My Church. We're going to be talking about that and what it means to love your church over the next few weeks. But I really do. I love my church. I love you. I love you specifically, and I'm glad that you are a part of First Church. Some of you may be thinking, well, you don't even know me to love me. But I really do. And so to just help us get on some common ground, there's a few things that you know, all of us love. On the screen, you'll see a picture of a, of a beach and some mountains. This is in Hawaii. And, you know, probably all of us love that. And so we've got something in common there. Or maybe you like an amazing steak dinner. Don't think it's not by accident that I chose a steak dinner on the first day of 21 days of prayer and fasting. What in the world? <laughs> steak never looks so good than it does right now. But it's not the only thing that we love. All of us, look at, take a look at the next picture. We, well, yeah, see, all of you love coffee. I'm probably the only person here who doesn't drink coffee. It's like 99% of the world drinks coffee. And then there are the unique, special 1% of us. We just live on a little higher plane. Someone texted me during the first service about not drinking coffee. And my response is, my wife drinks enough for both of us. I love that she loves coffee, but coffee's not for me, but this is. I'm all about chocolate. On February 1st, I will be eating some chocolate. So there's a few things we have in common. Something that I hope that we also have, all have in common is I love North Carolina. I think North Carolina is a beautiful state. This is a picture from Raven Rock, which, by the way, if you're new to the area, it's just right up the road. You'll want to go there sometime. Raven Rock is an amazing place here in the area, and I love North Carolina. I especially love North Carolina after last week. I was traveling home in that snowstorm that swept across our country, and I was stuck in it in Kansas and Missouri and Illinois all the way through West Virginia. Did not escape it until I got to North Carolina. Thank God for North Carolina. We're not so far north we get that ridiculously cold, harsh winter, but not so far south we get that crazy heat in the summer. We're in the perfect place, God's blessed state. That's why they call it Carolina Blue. I love North Carolina. But I also love my church. I love this church. I love the people that are in that picture this is an incredible church made up of amazing people. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel honor. It's an incredible honor, incredible privilege to be the pastor of this church. I don't deserve that privilege because this is an amazing church, and I love this church. It really is. Filled with amazing people. And this is what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, about what it means to love your church and why we love our church. One of the cool things that I love about our church, and this is not my message today, but I want to just throw it out there, and my hands got all tied up here, is we, we are a church that believes in baptism. We have a baptism right over here, and next Sunday we have three or four people who have signed up to be baptized, and if you're new to First Church and you're not familiar with baptism, there's a brochure that we have for you. It's in our side lobby. You can pick it up on your way out today. It's in the front lobby, the side lobby. It's just a baptism brochure with information about baptism. You can grab that. And when you're ready to be baptized, we're ready for you. The water in this tank, it's cold outside, but that water is heated. And we have changing rooms. We actually have shorts and T-shirts that you can throw on and personal hygiene so that you can get baptized and then put your own clothes back on and leave uh, in a comfortable way. We believe in baptism, and I love that. Jesus Christ was baptized. We follow his example. There's promises in the word of God about baptism. I'm glad that we're a church that believes in the baptism. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so... Specifically this morning, I want to talk to you about one of the things that I love about First Church is that we are a church that knows how to pray. We are a church that prays, and we are a church that gets together to pray, and we're a church that helps people pray individually. Something you will hear here at First Church is that we try to connect people to God in community or 
in, in fellowship with God. We try to connect people to others in community. We want people to grow in relationship. And we try to connect people to their purpose so they can be fruitful and fulfilled in their lives. These are the three things that we do here at church. Connect to God, to others, and to purpose. Well, part of connecting to God is knowing how to pray and growing in your relationship with God through prayer. Prayer is a vital part of what we do as a church. Now, there's something that's crazy about church, and that is that when you come to church, church is supposed to be a place of freedom. Church is supposed to be a place of deliverance. Church is supposed to be a place of healing. Church is supposed to be a place that miracles take place. This is what church is all about. The problem with that is I can't perform a miracle. I can't heal anyone. I can't really make you free. I can't set you, I can't deliver you from whatever it is that's bound you up. I can't save your soul. I cannot even forgive you of your sins. And yet God has asked us as a church, this is what we are here for. So I want you to be, I want you to know this. Church is God's idea. And so before you throw church out, they, they can't do what I need, they can't heal, they can't do all of that. God has decided that it's through the church that he wants to do these things. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the powers of hell will not conquer it. From the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, God set aside a place to meet with Adam and Eve. And then you see the tabernacle in the wilderness, and then you see Solomon's temple. God always had a place to come together with his people to meet them. And that's why the church exists, so that you and I can connect with God in worship. We can connect with him in prayer. And yet it's impossible for us to really do what God wants us to do. We have an assignment on our lives that we can't even do. We're doomed to failure outside of one thing. And that is God moving in our midst. And here's how God answers through prayer. Prayer is the avenue that you and I can connect with God. God wants us to pray. He wants us to be people of prayer. As I was preparing this message, I thought about something that happened to me in the last couple of weeks. Uh, over the Christmas break, I decided to take my family on a little vacation to go snow skiing. It is the only thing that my family can agree on doing. We all like doing a bunch of different things, but for some reason, all five of us like to go snow skiing. And so we go out to Colorado and get ourselves a little place to stay. And for the next four days, we went snow skiing. On the last day, I had been separated from my wife and kids. Somehow, I'm not sure I got separated, but I was trying to catch up with them. Now, if you've ever seen anyone ski, I love to ski. I'm not necessarily good at it, but I can go fast. <laughs> and uh, whenever I'm by myself, that's when I like to just cut loose and go. I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll ski in excess of 50 miles an hour. I've actually gone over 60 miles an hour skiing, and it's just there's an adrenaline rush that goes through my life. So, and my life flashes before my eyes, too. Um, so I, I, I'm separated from my wife and kids. I'm trying to get back with them, and so I'm just I'm turning on the burners. I'm trying to get caught up to where they are. I know where they are and you, the way skiing works. If you don't understand, I'll explain to you later. But I'm trying to catch up to them. And so I'm skiing as hard as I can. I'm coming down this mountain. It's a, it's a blue diamond, which is kind of the medium slope. And I'm skiing as hard as I can ski. And I hear, I pass this individual, and they're kind of just a blur to me because they're standing steer, still. But I hear this voice just cry out to me, please help me. And I, I just cut as hard as I can, put on the brake, snow starts flying, I turn back, and I look at them, and I, I, I said, what did you say? And the little girl looked at me, she was about 11, 12 years old, she says, can you help me? And I said, well, I don't know, but, but I, you know, I'll try, I wanna, if I can, I will. And she said, well, I got separated from my group, and I don't know where to go, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, I don't know who your group is, but let's ski down to the next place that so we can get someone on the radio, and they will help you find your group. And so I skied with her, slowed down a little bit, skied with her down to the ski patrol, and got her connected with someone who could help her, and they did. They got her connected to her group. I made sure that they were able to do that. And they were able to, but here's what I want you to know about that. She called out, please help me. And a lot of times, that is exactly what prayer is. Please help me. And that's why we do this. That's why we have 21 days of prayer. Please help me. 
See, a lot of people have made Christianity, they've made prayers to be these rituals that we go through. And we have these chants that we say, and, and we, have, we have to take a certain posture, and we have to be in a certain place. My wife loves to do her personal devotion. She'll put on some soft music. She'll sit on the front porch when it's a little bit better weather. And, and she'll have her cup of coffee and she's reading her Bible. And someone told her one time, they said, that's not a real devotion. And she's like, why isn't this a real devotion? And, and they, they said, well, you need to be on your knees in, in, a, in a dark place to, if it's going to be real. <laughs> Christians have really weirded up. <laughs> Praying. It doesn't have to be that way. Because prayer is a conversation between you and God. And you need to pray the way you pray. Now, if you like things to be weird, go ahead and weird it up. God's there for you. But if you want to just be normal like the rest of us, God's there for us too. He's cool with weird if that's who you are. For that matter, he made you weird. You can talk to him about that. And, and so that's what prayer is, just calling out, saying, hey, God, I, I, I need help. I want help from you. Now, there's some scriptures in the Bible that I want to I bring to you about uh, coming to God. The first one is in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. This is what you and I get to do. And so as I'm skiing down the, the hill, that little girl saying, please help me. She did not know me. I'm a stranger, complete stranger. And if you've ever seen my ski outfit, it, it, it's just all black. I've got a Darth Vader helmet and a black ski jacket and a black ski pants. She doesn't have any idea who I am. But she is desperate enough that it doesn't matter who it is, she wants to reach out to someone for help. She says, please help, and I stop and say, what do you need? And this is exactly the way you and I can come to God boldly and confidently asking God for help. Yes. Hebrews 4 says it like this. We do not have a high priest that is out of touch with our reality. I love that. He's not out of touch with where you are. He knows what you're going through. He's been through your weakness. He's been through your testing. He's experienced it all, everything but the sin. And so let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy and accept the help. That is so cool. I love that. That's the message translation. I don't use the message a lot, but I love the way it says it. Walk right up to him and take what he's ready to give. Take the mercy and accept the help. This is the kind of God that you and I serve who wants us to just come right up to him. As I was preparing this sermon, I remembered something actually happened a year or so ago. I was here at the office working and my cell phone rang and I looked down and it was my son and I answered it and I said, hello. And he said, hey, dad, I need your help. And I said, okay, what's going on? And he said, I was driving my Jeep down the All-American and my engine blew up and I'm sitting on the side of the All-American. I can't do anything. And I said, are you sure your engine blew up? And he said, well, yeah. He said, there's a lot of steam and smoke coming out of the top and a lot of fluids and stuff coming out of the bottom. I said, well, I'll be there as quickly as I can. And I jumped in a vehicle, grabbed a chain, went up there, and we, we put the chain on his Jeep and hauled it into a shop to, to have it repaired. And sure enough, he had blown the engine and... And, but here's what I want you to know. He made the phone call and didn't say, Hey, Dad, I love you, and I hope that I'm your favorite child. <laughs> and and I, I promise I'll work all this off. That's not how the conversation started. There was a confidence. And he said, Dad, I need your help. Can you come get me? This is how we come to the throne of God. Now, I believe in worship. I really do. I think, you, when, I think you can worship. But sometimes the only thing you can do is say, hey, God, it's, it's me. And, and, and I need your help. Amen. And this is the way you come to God. And G, uh, Paul made this statement to the church in Thessalonica. He said, never stop praying. Never, never quit praying. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean I just go mumbling around all the time? I'm always mumbling prayers, walking through Harris Teeter, and I'm praying, and people are walking by me, looking at me cross-eyed like something's wrong with me, and go to the next business, and people are, you know, you're sitting at your desk, and you're mumbling prayers, and the person in the next office is asking to be transferred. 
That's not what it means. It means to never, never leave the attitude of prayer. I can pray anytime in any place. Now, I love coming to this church to pray. My favorite place to pray is to go into the prayer room to pray. We have a prayer room that's actually on the, right behind this platform on the back side of this building. And there's a code on the door so you can get in there. It's open 24 hours a day. And I come in there most mornings. I will go in there and spend time in there praying. And I love to go in there and pray. There's music playing. But I don't have to be in that prayer room to pray. I can be driving down the road in my car and I can pray. I can be at home in my kitchen. I can be outside. I can be walking down the street. It doesn't matter where I am. I can be in a place of prayer. And that's why in, in our church, we have a Saturday morning prayer meeting. Every Saturday of the year, we call it Pray First. And that is the idea behind our 21 days of prayer. Pray first. And so here, here's, here's what that means, pray first. You're getting ready to send an email and you're not sure if you should send it or not? Pray before you send it. You're getting ready to say something to your spouse because you're angry? Why not stop and pray before you say what you're about to say? You're getting ready to go visit someone that's going through a difficult time and you're going there to help them. Why not pray before you go? You get up in the morning and you're just going to work. It's just an ordinary day. Why not pray first before you go? This is what it means to never stop praying. I can pray about anything at any time in any place. And all day long I can stop and I can pray and know that I have come boldly before the throne of God. Wow, what an incredible thing. God hears our prayers. Amen. Jesus told us to never give up. Luke 18, 1. One day Jesus told his disciples a story. He said... You should always pray and never give up. Why never give up? Because sometimes God's not going to answer your prayer as quickly as you would like. When that girl called out to me, please help, I immediately stopped and turned to help her. But when Reeve called me and said, hey dad, I need you to come get me, there was a gap between when he asked me to get there and when I arrived. Sometimes God doesn't answer when you want Him to because He knows there is a better time to answer your prayer. And so you may pray something today that doesn't get answered until tomorrow. And that's why Jesus said, hey, I want you to pray and do not quit praying because it may be a year from now before you get your answer. But you need to know that your prayer has been received into heaven and you have come boldly before Him. And so we pray. But Pastor, I don't know how to pray. I hear... People say that. They'll say, how do you, how do you pray, Pastor? I, you pray an hour? How do, you, how do you talk to God for an hour? And just recently I heard someone say to my wife, they said, they said I, I don't know how to talk to God for an hour. How do you do that? And they said, I, I, my wife asked them, they said, well, you don't feel like you have things to talk to God about? And they said, not for an hour. And my wife said, okay, let me ask you a question. And I leaned in. I want to know, how is she going to answer this? This is going to be good. And Lanita said, she said, are there things about your children that, that you're worried about and that you think maybe you ought to talk to God about? And they said, well, actually, yeah, there are. And she said, write those things down. And she said, are there things about your business that you're worried about that maybe you should be talking to God about? And they, they thought for a moment, they said, well, actually, yeah, there are some things. And then she said, well, what about other family members or friends? Maybe you have a friend that's sick. Maybe there's some other situation. And again, and, and this kept going on. Write, write that down. And it wasn't too long until Lenita looked at him and she said, you, you think you might have enough to talk to God about now? Because the truth of the matter is you and I have a lot of stuff to talk to God about. And we don't serve a God who is standing off in the distance saying, maybe I'll let you talk to me or maybe not. We serve a God that has open arms saying, I want you to come. And I want you to talk to me because I am your loving father and I will listen to you. So, so Jesus is an example for us how to pray. Matthew or Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Before daybreak the next morning. So in the morning. I like to pray in the morning. Jesus prayed in the morning. Now he prayed at different times as well. The morning is not the only time you can pray. In fact, there are times he prayed all through the night, but apparently for Jesus, morning was his regular time of prayer. I like to pray in the morning because I've discovered in my own life 
that if I try to wait till the evening to pray, I usually end up not being able to really pray the way that I want because I feel rushed and there's a lot of stuff and it just gets crammed at the end of my day. And so if I start my day with prayer before coffee, for me it's always before coffee. See, God's delivered me from that. <laughs> start your day with prayer. Now, you don't have to, but this is what Jesus did. He had a time, a specific time that he prayed. He got up early and he went out to an isolated place to pray. He got along with God. Now, there's two things about this. First of all, he had a place to pray and it was a private place. In the Bible, you see both personal private times of prayer and public gatherings where they came together to pray. And in fact, it's in the gatherings of prayer that you see so many of the miracles of the Bible. And so gathering to pray is very biblical, but so is your personal private prayer time. And so he had a private place to pray. He had, he had a time to pray, and he had a place to pray. And this is, this is how God worked. Now, Luke chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as Jesus, John taught his disciples. And so apparently Jesus was praying in a way that the disciples thought was unique or different or special. Because the disciples have been raised. Now they're, they're raised in this, this nation of Israel, this Jewish environment, the synagogues. This is all about their life. And yet they're saying, hey, teach us to pray like you're praying because you're praying differently. They had been taught certain uh, prayers to pray and they would pray those prayers but Jesus wasn't praying that way Jesus was just being real he was being authentic you see the prayers of Jesus prayers like if it's possible let this cup pass from me Jesus prayed some very deep very real prayers the disciples saw it and they said hey we want to know how to pray and there's several places in the Bible Several places in the Gospels where Jesus teaches them how to pray. The most famous, of course, is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, when that begins, the opening statement of that is, and I looked this up in the Greek, that we should pray like this. I was curious, does, does Jesus say that we should pray this specifically or that we should just pray a pattern like this? And in the Greek, you'll see that it's a pattern. And so you can pray the Lord's Prayer. I pray that all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. But that sets a pattern for you. It begins with worship. And then it prays about God's will being done. And then it prays about our needs being provided. And then it prays about repentance and forgiveness. And then it concludes with worship. And so it sets the pattern for us as to how we should pray. Now, I like to begin my prayers with worship. But I don't always have that liberty. Sometimes I just am like, God, I need help right now. And, and, and that is my worship. Just the fact that I'm calling on him and so this is why we do 21 days of prayer we do this to help you there's actually a number of things that we do uh, throughout the year and specifically at the beginning of the year one of the things we have is this it is a bible reading chart it's the beginning of the year it'd be a great time for you to start trying to read through the bible this particular bible reading chart is one that allows you to set your own schedule a lot of bible reading charts you have to follow a schedule you get behind you feel guilty not this one this one allows you to read in a year, 18 months, two years, however long it takes you to read the Bible. If you would like to have this Bible reading chart, they're available on the platform. They're available in both lobbies. You can pick one up when you leave today, and it will help you read through the Bible. I want you to connect with God in His Word. But in these 21 days, we provide you with these Pray First prayer guides. In these prayer guides are things, tools that you can use to help you grow in your prayer life with God. They're available on both sides of the platform and they're available in our lobbies and you can pick them up when you leave church day. But they're going to be here for the next 21 days. They're going to be on this platform and they're going to be here for you to come and to spend time in prayer. Now, every, every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. is when we have our prayer, 6 to 7. It's actually about 6 to 6.50. And then on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., of course, we do that all year long. We will be here praying. And I'm encouraging you to pray. I've had people tell me, Pastor, I, I need you just to tell me what to do. Well, if that's your personality, you need me to tell you what to do, I'm telling you, be here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I will be here. Our worship team will be up here leading us in worship. We'll have a great time of worship to start off. Someone will give a brief devotional, and then we'll have a time of prayer, and then we will conclude it with a time 
uh, uh, worship again. Our worship team will come back up and wrap it up. Now, I, and as far as I'm concerned, there's only two reasons you shouldn't be here. One of them is you have to be at work. If you need to be at work, go to work. But the other one is you have a health problem. Maybe you have COVID. If you have COVID, please stay home. I'm begging you. I don't want it. I've seen what it does to people. And those are the only two reasons. Now, some of you are struggling. I'm not sure I want to get out of bed that early. I have to get out of bed before 6 o'clock. I may discover when the sun rises. You can do it. You're mature enough to do it. You are mature enough to be here. Now, here's, the, here's the, one more thing that we do. And I love this. This little card is a prayer card. They're available on both sides of the platform. And again, available in the lobbies. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to write your prayer request on this card. If you want to pray about, if you want us to pray about your, your marriage, if you want us to pray about your children, if you want us to pray about your career, about your finances, if you want us to pray about your, your neighbor, I don't care what it is, as long as it's not private. Please don't put private stuff on here. And the reason I don't want you to put private personal stuff on there is because after you write this down, I want you to leave it laying on the platform. And every morning for the next 21 days, our team is going to lay these cards out. In fact, there's already some prayer requests up here. They're going to lay these cards out on the prayer, out on the platform. And as we go through these 6 a.m. prayer and Saturday 9 a.m. prayer, there will be people who will come up here and they will take a card and they will pray over that card. They'll put it back down. They'll grab another card. They'll pray over that card. I'm going to pray over every single one of them. And I'm going to do it every morning for the next 21 days. I'm going to be praying over these prayer requests. And so if you have a prayer request, we are a church. This is what I love about First Church. We are a church that knows how to pray and believes in prayer and knows that God answers our prayer. We are. We believe in it. And I want you to be a part of it. And in this, we are fasting. I'm fasting on the Daniel's fast, and I'm throwing in some absolute fast in the middle of that. If you don't know what the Daniel's fast is, look it up on the Internet. Jump in with us. This is day one of these 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you want more information, send me an email. I would love to have this conversation with you because there is something special about putting yourself in a place where you begin to hunger for more of God and desire more of Him. And that's what I want. I want more of God in my life. I want more of God in this church. I want more of God in this community. This is what we want. More of God. Amen? Amen. And so I love First Church. I love you. And I pray for you. I pray for some of you specifically this week and others as the Lord lays you in my heart. I will be praying for you. And I love that you pray for me. And I love that we're a church that knows how to pray. I love this church. If you love this church, you love God. Will you stand to your feet and together let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Let's worship Him. Let's do that this morning. Let's give God some glory in this house today. These next 21 days are going to be revolutionary. They are going to be revolutionary. 2022 I'm determined is not going to be like 2020 and 2021. No interest, no desire in repeating that. I'm all about moving forward and letting God do something great. There may be someone in here today that you feel like the little girl on the ski slope. You just kind of feel lost and you don't know where to go. And you just want to cry out, please help. Or maybe you're like my son, just stranded on the side of the road. Like, hey, Dad, can you come get me? And that's where you are today. That's where you are. In just a moment, I want to invite you to come to this altar. There's an open area down front. What makes this open area special is the fact that we have set it aside for people to come and to say, hey, God, it's me. I need you to do something in my life. And there's really nothing special about a walk until it's stepping out of where you're standing and you begin walking down this aisle. That walk is an act of faith. You walking down to this altar is an act of faith that says, God, I believe that you hear my prayer and that you can answer my prayer. And so just a moment, I'm going to pray over everybody here. And I'm inviting everybody to come. If you want God to 
If you have something you're praying about, maybe a family member, maybe something personal, maybe a, a healing in your body or healing in your marriage or liberty or freedom or deliverance. Maybe it's something in your career. I don't know what it is. But you're saying, God, I need you. And I want you to do a work in my life. As I'm praying, I want you to step out and make your way down to this altar. Come as close as you can so that everybody can come. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, right now. We pray, Lord, with hearts of faith. We believe that you're a God. We believe that you're a God who sees every step that we take. You're a God who understands us in every possible way. We believe that, Lord Jesus. We believe you, Lord Jesus. We believe that you hear our prayers, Lord, as we pray in this service today, Lord Jesus. We believe that you hear our prayers. Not only do we believe that you hear our prayers, Lord, but we know that you have the ability to answer our prayers. You have the power to answer my prayer today. And when I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to help me with my family, or to help me with my business, or to help me, Lord Jesus, Lord, in my personal life, Lord, I know that you hear me, Lord, and so I am praying today that you will do something supernatural, Lord Jesus. Do something miraculous, Lord. Heal today, Lord Jesus. Deliver, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.